Thank you very much. Um, I have been working together with Charles Upson uh, for the last 26 years, and it's really my honor and privilege to be working for so long in so many projects, uh, which, which uh, I think we uh, made a useful contribution. Um, it all started from the, the time I, when I was a po postdoc at uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, the pr so first project we were working on the low temperature and beacon uh, indium phosphide. And that was inspired by the, the time low temperature getting arsenide was very useful for semi insulating uh, substrate. So the idea is to whether we can produce semi insulating indium phosphide by doing low temperature growth and to introduce the defects in the middle gap and then you ping the Fermi level. And what we soon realized. This is actually not possible because the level is not, instead of in the middle gap, it was in the conduction band. And it's auto-ionized, so it became a metallic N-type conduction, actually. So on um, this pro first project, we, we really kind of found the fundamental limits of this material, which is actually not possible. Uh, in a way, it signed the, the death certificate for the project, but on the other hand, we saved uh, a lot of tax paying money in not pursuing something uh, which is fundamentally not possible. Um, after I return back to, to Sweden, and the, the first project we're working together is, in fact, to use this uh, metallic type of conduction uh, to make something useful. So what we first we did here is to do a, a hemp structure, so do a modulation doping um, using this um, defects, which is anti sites so the atom is instead of sitting on its own side, is sitting on the other one. And this can be introduced by just a lower temperature. You don't need to use external dopants. Um, it's, it's, it's a good concept. It's, I'm not sure how it technologically it's, uh, uh, it has uh, applied, but in case you have a problem with the memory effects, uh, this can be quite neat uh, way of doing it. And after that, we have been working uh, more on the dilute nitrides and different things. And it turns out dilute nitrides has extraordinary spin effects. Accidentally, on the way, we discovered that, uh, which can be used for spin tronics. So we, that's what we're working a lot on it. Uh, why are we interested in spin tronics? Um, as everybody knows, you, uh, the CMOS technology, we have the scaling effects uh, that uh, going down in, in size, and the, the most law going to go to end, predict to go to end in, in 10 years or so. So uh, everybody's looking for new technology, and the spintronics is one of them. Uh, it starts from the, the electron we're using, um, property of charge, so the, all the electronics using charge, you put the voltage and you run the current. But the electron also has another fundamental property, is the spin, and which is magnetic uh, put, uh, property. So if you look at the all the devices, you have the photonics, you have the electronics based on semiconductors, and then you have the, uh, the uh, storage, uh, information uh, storage based on the, uh, the metal, metal ferromagnetic. So the idea is uh, if you can combine all these together. So for example, you can combine all the, the RAM and the hard disk into a magnetic RAM, and you can integrate into the processors and the communication uh, uh, lasers, so you can have a very uh, purpose-designed device. Uh, to have this technology, of course, it's like the, the normal electronics, you need to have a, a basic uh, building blocks. You need to have transistors, style, rectifiers, and you have all these. So um, in the spintronics, we need to find the, uh, the fundamental building blocks. Um, the most tricky one is spin filter. Uh, semiconductors are non-magnetic, so that, that means the number of electrons spin and spin down uh, equal number. So if you want to have a spintronics, you need to have all electron pointing into a certain direction. So we need to have a, a, a polarized electron spin come out, and then during the process, when this uh, information flow, you, the, inf uh, the signal getting weaker, so you can amplify it, and after that, the information need, need to be read, uh, read out. So this uh, is what we try to do, how we can do uh, with the uh, dilute nitrides to make a spintronic uh, component. Uh, what turns out, um, this is actually accidental uh, discovery, 
um, we were looking at the uh, um, non-rated channels in dilute nitrite uh, because it, the uh, main applications minority device uh, carrier devices, photonic devices. So the light can be killed by the defects. So in this case, um, uh, we have the gallium interstitial, which instead of sitting on its own sites, it's go to the interstitial sites. And it's only take one out of a million to be off sites to kill a uh, lot of luminescence there. So this we identified. Then we found out if you polarize the, uh, the electron slightly, you're going to have enhancement in the light emission. The idea is you're going to deplete, if you polarize the defects, you cannot capture the same spin orientations. You can only capture the other orientation. So in this way, you keep this uh, majority spin is not, not suffering the non-radiative channel. So by doing that, we actually found that the, the light emission can enhance by 800 times. And this also produces a complete polarized spin, electron spin uh, um, in the conduction band. So if we, and this works at the room temperature, you, you know the, the main approach in this material, semiconductor to make it magnetic, so to put magnetic impurities. But the problem is the curie temperature is very low, it's below room temperature. So for practical application, it's not that. So, but the capture of this process is temperature thermally activated. So the higher the temperature, the better. So room temperature will produce the world record spin polarization um, for this material, it's a canvas. And we also developed the spin amplifier. So if you have a weak signal coming in, you can polarize the, the defense electron spin by this weak polarization. And what comes out is amplified spin signal. So you can easily do it at room temperature. We also uh, developed how to nu uh, polarize the nuclear spins because nuclear spin is quite isolated. So it's an ideal. Uh, candidate for uh, qubits. Um, to interact with the nuclear spin, you uh, interact with the electron spins. You have this flip-flop process. So if the nuclear spin has the same direction as the electron spin, you cannot flip because the momentum conservation forbids this. But if the nuclear spin is opposite, you can flip it to the same direction of with the electron spin. So you can do this process at room temperature, polarize um, the uh, nuclear spin very efficiently in this process. So that was the most efficient found in any semiconductor, in any material can polarize nuclear spin. We also uh, try to de uh, develop detectors. You have a spin coming in, how we read it out. So one thing it's read out is to using the light. It became a circular polarized light if it's been polarized. So we try to Charles develop very nice, beautiful structures, which uh, molecular structures you can have um, single dots, you can have, have double dots, you can have clusters, you can have rings. So we were looking to these uh, materials to see which preserve the best spin. And the, the key is not to causing the spin coupling, which causing this. So we found out that the higher the symmetry um, of the, the quantum dot structure, the best the spin preserving. So this is just one of the example. We try to see uh, whether we can read out spin uh, with uh, a semiconductor just from the light emission. So. All this material will be developed on, on dilute nitrides, and this is developed on, uh, in gas on getting arsenic. So these all components can be basically built up on the same material. And um, if you look at the, uh, the, my publications in the last few years, if I look at the co-author co um, map, you see who got the biggest circle here. <laughs> <laughs> so we have. 150 uh, joint papers, including uh, scientific or uh, the in international conferences. Um, we really appreciate Charles for all these. Um, it's brilliant in identifying new directions and found the niche where to be the, the forefront. And I have a very unique sample which uh, provides this op opportunity to uh, find or discover new phenomena in this material. So. Um, with all this contribution, uh, our university recognized uh, uh, a Charles as honorary doctorate, and you've seen some of these photos. We uh, usually everybody get a, a hat with a big ceremony, <laughs> and 
uh, he's in good company. Uh, here, you, you, many of you probably know the model, uh, the model Nobel Prize winner, uh, Akisaki. He awarded before he got the Nobel Prize. Amano got last year, that is after he got the Nobel Prize. So it's really uh, a great honor for we uh, Chelsea's among that. And uh, with that, I'd like to congratulation, uh, congr congratulate Charles for remarkable achievement, all the scientific, uh, both scientific, you also heard, uh, and later on as well, education and outreach. And thank you for all these last 28 years. And we're going to miss you at work, but uh, our friendship goes forever. And I wish you a happy retirement, and the most <laughs> importantly, you spend more, have more time with the family. Thank you.